The purpose of this presentation is to review general information related to the process of genetic testing so that your genetic counseling appointment can be highly specific to you and your care. Some things that will be reviewed include different causes of cancer, the process of genetic testing, insurance coverage and protective laws regarding genetic information, possible test results, and other types of genetic testing. To start off, what is a gene and a gene mutation? A gene is an instruction that tells your body how to function. Our genes are passed on from parents to their children so that everyone receives one copy from each parent. Changes, mistakes, or errors in a gene are called genetic mutations. When this happens, the gene does not work correctly or give the right directions to the body. Most cancer is not genetic, but rather something that occurs sporadically or by random chance. And we find that 70 to 85% of all cancers are sporadic. 10 to 20% of cancer is what we call familial cancer, which is when a cluster can be seen within one family. This might be occurring due to shared environments, lifestyle, genetic influences, or other factors within one family. Only 5 to 10% of cancers are considered hereditary or inherited, which are the result of a genetic mutation that someone is born with. To review the difference between sporadic and hereditary cancers, sporadic cancers can have a couple of known causes which can include factors such as old age, tobacco use, exposure to sun or chemicals, and other considerations that can cause damage to certain genes that can then develop into cancer. Hereditary cancers happen when someone is born with a genetic mutation, which is present in all cells in their body. These mutations have a 50-50 chance of being passed down to future generations. What might be some examples of red flags that could indicate a hereditary cancer in the family? This is a tool called a pedigree that we use to examine family history of cancer with circles representing females and squares representing males. One thing we would take note of is a younger age of diagnosis than is typically expected. For instance, breast or colon cancer under 50 years of age. Other red flags include ovarian, pancreatic, or metastatic prostate cancers diagnosed at any age. Other considerations include multiple family members with the same type of cancer, multiple family members on the same side of the family with related cancers, rare cancers, cancers on both sides of the body, such as right and left-sided kidney cancers, and of course, if someone in the family has a known genetic mutation, that is a reason that someone may want to consider genetic testing for themselves. What are some of the potential benefits of genetic testing? Genetic testing can tell us if you were born with a genetic mutation that caused the cancer in you or your relative. This information can improve preventive measures by determining if you may need specific screenings for cancer recurrence or for different kinds of cancer. For someone undergoing active treatment, this information may be helpful for their doctors to know about to identify treatment options. It can also provide information for family members of their potential cancer risk. There are a couple of options for sample collection. Genetic testing is typically completed via a blood draw, saliva, or buckle, also called cheek swab sample. In certain cases where a patient has lymphoma or certain blood cancers, it may be recommended to take the sample via skin punch biopsy instead. Your genetic counselor will review this with you at your appointment to make sure you're getting the most appropriate sample. Your genetic counselor will also coordinate how to obtain the sample from you, depending on if you have an in-person or virtual appointment with us. Once we receive the sample, results typically come back within three weeks. Is genetic testing covered by insurance? Most insurances cover some or all of the cost for genetic testing. You must meet nationally recognized criteria that indicates that genetic testing is medically necessary for you. Our genetic counselors are well-versed in these criteria and will discuss this in more detail at your individual appointment. If you do not meet national criteria to qualify, do not have insurance or wish to self-pay, the cost for testing is $249. Protections for genetic information. The federal law called the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act, or GINA, 
protects genetic information and genetic test results so that they cannot be used as a pre-existing condition in terms of health insurance or employment. Here in Florida, there is an additional state law that provides protection over genetic information regarding life insurance, short and long-term care insurance, and disability. There are three possible test results for genetic testing. These are negative, positive, and a variant of uncertain significance, also called a VUS. A negative or normal result is the most common. A negative result means that no harmful mutations were found, and it is much less likely for there to be risk of hereditary cancer. If a positive result is found, a harmful mutation was identified in one of the analyzed genes. This means that one of the two copies of this gene is not working the way it should be, which indicates a hereditary increased risk for cancer. In this case, your genetic counselor will review what next steps might be recommended and how this information may affect your care. With a positive result, other family members may be at risk and may benefit from getting testing done themselves. A variant of uncertain significance or VUS. With this result, a change has been identified, but at this point, we do not know whether this type of change increases risk for cancer or if it is a benign genetic change that makes you different from everyone else. Because most VUS results are eventually reclassified as benign, we treat this kind of result the same as a negative or normal result and do not change screening or treatment recommendations. Other types of genetic testing that you may have done or heard of Tumor testing is typically performed on tissue sample and is normally ordered by a medical oncologist. This testing looks for genetic markers only within the tumor that may provide information about targeted therapies. This is different from the genetic testing we do, which looks for a genetic mutation that is present in all of the cells in your body. Additionally, direct-to-consumer testing is performed by different companies to examine ancestry or general health screens. However, these tests are not meant to guide medical decision making. In preparing for your appointment, it is very helpful for us to get your family history beforehand to ensure a personalized risk assessment during the appointment. We understand that sometimes information is limited and whatever you are able to share is helpful. You may be emailed a questionnaire through an online program called Progeny to enter this information or be called by our department prior to your appointment. We're most interested in learning about who in the family has developed a cancer diagnosis, what kind of cancer, and an estimated age of diagnosis. You can reach us at 813-745-3555 to review this information. If either yourself or a family member has already had genetic testing, it would be very helpful for us to see a copy of this genetic test report. You can email us a copy at genetics at moffitt.org, fax a copy to our department at 813-745-5445, or bring in a physical copy with you to the appointment. If you have personal questions, please make sure to write them down and bring them with you so we can be sure to address them. If you are being seen for a virtual or Zoom appointment, we do prefer that you use a computer if possible so that you can sign the required informed consent for genetic testing. Using a phone or tablet for the appointment will work fine as well, but we will have to send the consent form to you another way, which may delay the testing process as we must have a signed consent form before the sample can be taken. With that, thank you for your time. We hope you found this presentation to be helpful ahead of your genetic counseling appointment. Please feel free to contact our clinic if you have any questions.